point for the backpack straps. And this is what sort of the, well, it's not finished, but the almost finished product is going to be like. I just wanted to explain the process that I'm using to get this on here uh, because I think it's a little bit unique. It's uh, probably not recommended. It's probably not the right way to do it, but this is the way I think it's easiest. So this is really thick. Obviously, it's two layers of this veg tan, not skived at all and the, the one layer in here of the chrome backpack material. And so what I'm doing is starting out by punching all of the holes in just a single side. So this side has nothing on it yet. And then I've got the holes in here. So what I'm gonna do is glue this onto here and punch all the holes. But before I do that, I'm actually going to punch all of the holes in the reverse of this just by simply folding this over, lining it up as best I can. Might uh, put the rivets in just temporarily so that everything is properly lined up. And I'll clamp it using one of these squeeze clamps right here. Clamp it together, make sure everything's lined up, and then I'll punch straight through all of these and the idea is that I don't have to glue these two together in order to get the holes in the appropriate spots because they're already cut in here. There's not gonna be any real movement going on. And then of course, once I have actually put it on here, the idea is that I'll have the, the rivets to line everything up, shove this onto here on the rivets, and theoretically, all of these holes that I've punched for the stitching should be in perfect alignment. And so this one, I haven't actually stitched, but I've already checked and the holes already look like they line up. So I'm happy with that and uh, gonna do it again on this side.
So the second part of this video, and really the last part of building this bag, is making the straps. Uh, you may have noticed that hasn't been done yet, and I did leave it to last uh, for a number of reasons. Partially because I wasn't really sure that it was going to even be a bag at this point, and so I didn't want to make some straps that wouldn't get used, but I also wanted to make sure that they were going to be a proper size and shape and all that to fit the bag. And at this point, I was ready to uh, to make that sort of final step, which is making these straps. They're uh, made out of that thick veg tan again, and uh, I, I have a bunch of shape and sort of angles on them, so they're a bit complex to make. Uh, but as you'll see, they uh, they end up working out really well. This is kind of the first test fitting. It feels fairly comfortable. You know, nothing like really weird with it. So I wonder, it's hard for me to see, but I wonder how these look, these bottom pieces. So I realized fairly quickly that the top of the bag would Basically, it would hang open over uh, the sides of the flaps on the top. And I realized really the best thing, and I should have done this probably from the start, is uh, putting in a drawstring at the top. So that's what I'm doing here, punching a bunch of holes, and I'm making a string that will uh, go through the top of the bag and closes everything up so it actually closes on the top instead of just hanging sort of half open all the time.
almost, almost done. So you can see the straps are now finished, except like this is the only thing that's not done is these rivets here. Man, it looks awesome. So for those of you that stuck around to see this build, here you go, finished product. Carrying it around, I've actually been carrying it for about a month now since I finished and uh, recorded all of the original videos. I have really enjoyed having it and I'm now going to just walk you through all of the details and the sort of construction and my experience using it so far. So thank you for following along. Let's go into the shop. All right, so here it is. This is the bag all finished and it's all loaded up with a bunch of stuff just so I could sort of show you what it looks like with stuff in it as well as sort of the capacity of it and all that. Uh, so I'm going to go over everything. I want to talk about all the details, all the features, all of the things that I like and don't like and uh, yeah, I just, just sort of discuss how this project went. Um, Obviously, it was a big project and putting it together in the video form, you can probably tell it's, you know, it was four videos long. It was a lot of variety of different things. There's so many different sort of uh, processes involved. So it was, it was a lot of fun, but it was a very big challenge for me. So let's get into it. Um, you can see, I, I think aesthetically, it's worked out fairly well. Um, uh, the the maybe to me the issue just looking at it is the the flaps are maybe a little bit too long. The whole thing kind of looks a little bit flatter than I planned. So 
I think if the flaps were a bit shorter, it would look a little bit more proportional. Like if the flaps here were almost more in proportion with the flap here, I don't know, something along those lines. It looks a little bit strange. Um, also, you can see that all of the straps I ended up, I didn't know the length that I needed or how long they would be uh, adjusted to, and there's way too many holes in all of them. Uh, I mean, technically, the, you know, you could fill the bag really full and use some more of this, but look at how full it would have to be if you wanted to use some of these lower down holes, like, that's pretty extreme, but, you know, so uh, you can see there's some design sort of elements that I just couldn't really account for until I started building it and I just didn't have the personal experience to be able to tell. I have been using the bag quite a bit, so um, I'm already getting a feel a little bit for how it's going to wear and how things are going to change. Um, I can see, like I use this handle all the time, I use it, you know, at the gym and all that. And I can already, I can see that the, the uh, pieces here that are just riveted together are kind of folding out. I don't think there's a strength issue, but it's, you know, over time it's just going to look a little bit sloppier than it did at first. Another thing with where the the straps sit on the on the flaps up here when you open the bag they bend around this corner here and so they end up with this bend in them all the time I don't know if you can see that but and they're all they're kind of pulling up off of the surface of this material um, I don't know I think ultimately the while the straps look kind of cool they really would have been better served if this whole thing was just down here. Like, there's no reason for the strap to cover the entirety of this flap. It may as well just be at the end of the flap. Um, and that comes into play when you're using it because you can see this material is not supported by anything. So when you go to close it, you, you have to, you know, place it down. Just like there's nothing that's keeping it in place. And so then when you, you tighten the bag, it's all kind of flopping around. Yeah, there's some oversights there just because of the design. I, I, didn't, I didn't really expect how it would work when it was done. Similarly, I'm sort of annoyed by this while I use the bag. Uh, because this attachment point is separate, it doesn't sit upright naturally. It always just falls down. So when you actually put the bag down anywhere, the, the straps always sit like this. Right, just spread out. So whenever you put the bag somewhere, you're taking up all kinds of space and there's really no there's no way to hold it. There's no way to keep things, you know, I might you, you know, you could do something like that, but you know, just naturally when you put the bag down, that's how the straps sit. So it's kind of annoying. It would be nice if I could come up with a way for these to just be held vertical so that they don't flop down all the time. I noticed personally wearing this, and I'm, I'm not a small person, I'm like a six foot tall guy, I have fairly wide shoulders. I think the placement of these straps is actually a little bit too wide, um, and it would almost be better if they were not only closer together, but a little bit more angled. Um, they sit really wide on my shoulders, and one of the problems with that is it feels like they're always, it's always pulling uh, my shirt backwards and over my shoulders, so that's kind of annoying too. Um, you get used to it, you just have to wear it a little bit differently than a standard backpack, but um, while this looks like a pretty neat setup, it's a little bit too wide, I think. So let's go ahead and look through the bag a little bit. Um, actually, let's start with the front pocket. So um, one of the design sort of issues or something to think about with the front pocket, and I'm just gonna open the top flaps first, is because this strap is attached to this panel here rather than this you know, pocket itself, it does this weird thing if you tighten it down too far where it's sort of just pulling, it pulls the, the pocket upward and it, and it stretches this front panel downward, but it's not really closing the pocket any better. So, you know, it's a weird problem. Again, it's one of those times where it would probably be best if this strap was just straight attached to this flap rather than this panel here. It's unnecessary, it doesn't really help or keep the pocket closed any better, but it does look kind of neat that this strap is just kind of disappearing behind it. There's lots of room in here, and I do, I just have a few things like my sort of regular stuff, some hand lotion and a lock to bring to the gym. I use this mainly as a gym bag right now. I'm not in school today, so when I'm back in school, I might try and use it as a daily bag for school. Um, and I'm getting a lot of experience with like how I would do this differently for day-to-day -day use. It's pretty interesting. I've already come up with a lot of solutions to these things. 
So the other thing, um, I, I think I, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier in the build, but part of the point, the reason that I don't have any stitching across the top is so that this, and it's actually easier if I open this, this is actually a big pocket back here. So you can actually put stuff behind the pocket. Now, of course, it does kind of help to undo this, but say your phone, for example, can easily slide right behind the pocket. So you have kind of a double pocket almost, um, but it is really, really annoying to try and use that when this strap is closed. So let me just try and demonstrate. So let's say it's sitting like that. You can, you can put your phone in here, and actually, mind you, it's even worse when this strap is down, but it's uh, just because of the shape of this strap and the way that it's connected to the back, it's, it's pretty annoying. Again, it would be better if this strap was just attached to the flap instead. Okay, now the drawstring was, like I, I think I mentioned earlier in this video, uh, it was sort of a, an afterthought. I didn't, I didn't exactly plan on doing it this way. Uh, in the end, I think it actually looks really nice. It, it fits the, the whole concept of the bag really well. So I'm happy with the draw strap. I like this little toggle that I made. It's pretty cool. I like that it's a contrast to the rest of the bag. It's just natural. It's not finished at all. So, you know, over time, it's kind of just gonna develop its own character. And I have have the flesh or the fuzzy side out for whatever reason I just thought it would be cool and putting the knots on the end definitely helps uh, just for usability I pull basically to use the bag I just pull this thing all the way back to where it stops and open the bag up so you can see all the pockets in the front they're they're really awesome they work really well I keep you know an, uh, a flashlight a knife and a pen in here this is my gym iPod and even a mouse. So lots of room. This is a good, this is a great uh, sunglasses pocket. That's where, what I normally keep in here. And you know, lots of, lots more storage that I'm not using. So one modification that I've made since the videos were recorded, I didn't put this in the videos, is these two snaps right here. What I found is that when I didn't have these, the bag always sat like this. And so what happened is, it's really hard to use the main compartment and basically just because of the weight when you look at all of this this veg tan stuff here is so heavy it would pull this back open so really it's like this laptop pocket was easily accessible and the main pocket of the bag really wasn't so yeah uh, I found my my thinking was that attaching these two together would help and it really does this is one of the biggest improvements I think I I could have made it's so much easier to use the bag now that it kind of holds itself open a little bit more plus it's nice that the laptop is contained I guess so on that note this is the laptop pocket and you can see that it is probably a lot bigger than it needs to be. Honestly, it's it's pretty large. And so for my laptop, it's way too big. And unfortunately, it's too small to fit the laptop case that I made in a previous video. Um, that, that wasn't something I intended. Like, I didn't really think about how it would fit in here. I just wanted to make this a certain dimension. Um, in hindsight, I wish I had made it the size to fit that case but you know this fits in here easily and I I don't feel like it would need anything more protection wise this leather is very soft but it's thick so you know it's it's gonna protect it I wouldn't be too worried about it um, the only thing is that's a tiny little laptop in a really big pocket so I think what I'll end up doing and you can see you know for example this is this is a case that I use to hold notes in and I think something like that is easily going to fit in there with my laptop, so I think I'll probably use this pocket for more than just a laptop pocket, you know, depending on what I really need to carry. But looking inside, let me, let me close this up, it does help. So looking inside, I just have a few things hidden in here. Got my water bottle and a textbook. And a nice little project that I have video I might I might use the video for this one but I'm I'm really this was a prototype I really think I might make another one and make a, a video of that but this is a little pencil case that I made but you can see that that's all I had in there that's the inside of the bag um, 
Overall, I think the dimensions of this bag are just a hair on the small side. I wish it was a little bit wider and, you know, even, even depth front to back would be nice to have a little bit more room. Um, Height-wise, it's, it's good, actually. It's a pretty tall bag, I think. Uh, so height is is no problem and for me the height of a bag is kind of important because I'm fairly tall and I don't want some little stubby bag on my back so I like the depth like uh, you know top to bottom is good but front to back it's a little bit small and definitely width wise it's a little bit small and you, you can see that there's a bit of a struggle putting in something like this is you know a pretty typical width for stuff that you'd put in a backpack and and these um, this cord being here doesn't help, but it's it's kind of snug even for something like this and there's nothing in here, so it's going to be interesting to use it uh, on a day-to-day -day and see how it goes, but overall I'm I'm happy with it. It's, it's wearing in a little bit already and I'm happy with the way it looks with a little bit of use on it. You get used to it, but I think there's there's a few uh, there's there's a few usability things that I would love to improve, um, but overall I'm pretty proud of it. You, you know, every time you use it and you see all of the detail work, you see all the rivets and the stitching, and you you know you manipulate these straps. It feels good. It's it's a solid feeling bag, and I'm proud to get to use something that I've made with my own two hands. I would, be, I would be very interested in making a second version for myself. I'd be very interested in making more for other people. Um, but, you know, it's such an expensive endeavor. Just to give you a sort of a ballpark, um, the side of this gray material that I purchased was uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of $300. And so I made that laptop case out of it, as well as this, and I still have a little bit left over. So. Um, when you include that, you include all of the, the veg tan leather and all of the hardware. I would estimate this costs something in the neighborhood of $200 to $250 in materials. I don't know exactly, but uh, that gives you sort of an idea where you add in the amount of hours that it took to make the thing. And of course, me being an amateur, it's going to take a lot more. But, you know, total, I think a bag like this to, to even really be able to make money on it is, well, it's expensive. Let's just say that. Uh, maybe someday I'll get the opportunity to try again and improve on some of the design. It, it does work pretty well and I'm enjoying using it and we'll see what else comes up, uh, what else fails or wears out or whatever, you know, changes I feel like I need to make in the future. Um, I'm excited to see that just because the design and everything is what I'm super interested in. So, so that's it guys. Thanks for watching this series. I really appreciate anybody that actually stuck through for all four of these videos. Um, I know it's a lot of volume, but uh, I'm really happy with what I put together here and as far as goals that I had for this summer, completing something at this scale was, was on that list and I'm really happy that I got to do it. So thank you again for tuning in and see you on the next one.